Little Ken Spriggs here with part two of my Ravel Mandalorian N1 Starfighter. Uh, I begin by working on the lower engine and getting that lit and painted uh, and ready to go on the ship. Uh, and then I move on to the cockpit and getting that lit as well with some, some lights on the dowels on there. Uh, and then I get the second engine attached and then do some painting uh, onto the actual ship itself. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so I'm working on the bottom engine underneath. And so I, uh, I glued a blue chip SMD, pre-wired SMD, into the inside of this part here, the one that I redid the, um, the detail here in some clear, clear resin. Uh, once I got that in place, I, it's attached to magnet wire, so I wanted something a little more solid. So I, I uh, soldered on some of this thicker wire that I like, and you can see the shrink tubing there. And then I just, um, after I attached this nozzle part onto this main piece that I glued together, I then went ahead and did some five minute epoxy to set those wires in place to keep them nice and solid. Uh, then these wires are gonna go up into the kit itself <clears throat> and then the, um, they're gonna light that engine. So let me pop this into the bottom of the, of the ship and I'll put a battery on that and show you what that's gonna look like. All right, so there's, there's plenty of room for the wires to come through there, <clears throat> as you can see. And I have a lot of extra wire, so I can wire it into the other parts that will pretty much meet down in this section to come down through uh, a, um, a tube, like a brass tube, to go into the diorama. And then there's the engine on the bottom. And that's not glued in place. I'm going to get it all painted and weathered before I do that. Uh, but there it is on the back of the engine. Let me pop a battery on that, and we'll take a look at how that's going to look lit up. All right, there we go. So looking really cool. Focus. Definitely putting out some nice light. Come on. And so what I'm going to do is get this whole part painted and weathered. I'm going to use the same aluminum base coat, probably with some of the oily steel, and then go back in with some of the washes to get all that detail to show up. Uh, I'm also going to, once I'm done, I'm going to dry brush some of the aluminum over the detail, sorry for the shakiness, on that part right there to give it a little more of the detail that's that's there, make it more visible. So, all right. So I got the aluminum onto the part itself, the whole thing. I went back over it with the oily steel speckles. It's not as obvious uh, on the camera, but you can see there that there are some imperfections and blemishes. That's kind of the idea, that this isn't brand new, that a lot of the parts on this ship are going to be like this, and I can still do a little bit of slight weathering on them. We'll see. But I want there to be a contrast between this older pitted metal and the brand new chrome that uh, appears on on some of the other parts, like I did on the engines, the side engines. Um, because the original Naboo fighters were bright chrome and bright yellow, brand new spaceships. They did not look at all like the standard Star Wars beat up, dirty, uh, well-used spaceships. Um, so the idea is this is many years old, like 20 years old, something like that at that time and so uh, they redid it and, and replaced a lot of parts um so i put a little bit of um of the aluminum onto the clear part and almost completely coated it <clears throat> but the light is very bright and it's still shine through so i decided to take that back off 
and I put on uh, some of the weathering instead. This is really still pretty bright. It's going to wash out a lot on the screen, as you can see. Very, very bright. But it has dimmed it down quite a lot than what it was with just the clear part. Uh, so what I'm using is, just like I did on the engines, the side engines, I used some Abtalon 502 oils. <clears throat> so I used some Starship fill, a little bit of engine grease, <clears throat> and a little bit of red rust. And it's not completely done. I just, um, I put it on fairly heavily, let it sit. And then uh, even tomorrow or the next day, I can go back over it with a little bit of brush, a little bit of a brush and some of the odorless thinner and, and streak some of it back and just leave most of it into the dark recesses. So, okay. But for now, that's going to be done. Let me go ahead and put that back on the bottom of the ship and show you how that's going to look for now. All right, so there we go. There it is in the ship. I keep in mind, obviously, the rest of the bottom isn't painted, so this looks out of place with the gray plastic. And the blue light does not look like that in real life. It just, it's, it's so bright that it's washing out the camera. It doesn't want to adjust to the blue light. It just makes everything look blue. But it looks a lot dimmer since I put the oil wash on it. But it's going to be nice and bright in the back, blowing through for the engine. So, okay. All right, so I'm going to put that part aside for now. That's ready to go as far as uh, the engines lit up, and I can start working on the um, the cockpit. All right, so as you can see from the previous stills, um, I started doing a lot of work on the cockpit controls. Uh, in addition, I 3D printed a uh, figure for Mando and Grogu to go inside the ship, uh, as opposed to the kit parts. Um, and I used the same figures that I used from Gambody from my previous build of the N1 Starfighter. Um, I scaled them up a little bit. I made a couple of sizes until I got them to be the right size for this cockpit. Um, not real thrilled with the, the kit parts. I mean, they'll do in a pinch, but proportions are all wrong. His helmet is way too big for this. I don't really like that pose. Not a whole lot of detail on his armor or his body. And, uh, Grogu's even worse. He's just really bizarre looking. Yeah, that's weird. And this is, there's two versions. This is the one that goes in the, the dome, which is what I'm going to be using. There's also a version where he is on Mando's lap. Still pretty crappy. Yeah, that head is just way out of proportion with the rest of them. So I'm not going to be using either of those. I'm going to be using the much superior version that I 3D printed. Very nice. And some people have said, well, you're not going to see much of it. Well, you get the whole canopy up there. You're going to see all of this. You're not going to see his boots because they'll be underneath, but you'll see the rest of him, which is cool. The only thing I'm going to have to adapt is the controls in his hands are pulled back whereas the ones in this one are extended and there's actually some slots in the cockpit controls where these go into it but what I could probably do is 
either cut off the hands from this one with the controls or sorry or run some kind of a there's actually a part that comes through here because he pulls these out and there's some rods or some other controls on those so I can look at that and see but certainly much much better uh, and in addition here's the Grogu far better looking I still have to take him off the supports because he's so tiny okay so I'm definitely going to use those instead and um and I'll get to painting those shortly. So I started doing uh, some lighting in the controls as well. Let me go ahead and, and show you that. All right, so um, also in the previous stills, I showed that I, I drilled out the main display areas, at least the two, the two main ones on the left and the right. Uh, and I put in some 2.5 millimeter flexible side glow fiber optic that I get from Evan Designs, uh, which is about the right size to, um, to fit inside of those holes. Uh, initially, I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I made, I glued on a green chip SMD, made them green. I posted some pictures out there on Facebook, but then, then I did my research, which you really should do first went back and they're blue they're not green they're blue and the the middle one is also lit up so I went back and redid it um, and basically all I did was you can see I have those glued into there and I have them going into this rubber tube and I have a blue SMD chip SMD on the end let me turn that on and show you what that's going to look like yeah okay so much cooler. So what I'm going to do then is now that those are set up and they're inside of there, I'm going to go ahead and put on the decals for the little detail over top of them. So hopefully it'll give it some a little more detail like they are the, the displays. The center one was a little set back because it's not as wide. So I couldn't get it, I didn't want to make it as thick as the other two in order to um, to have that tube come all the way out of it. So what I did was I put some 5-minute epoxy in there, as you can see. And once I put the decal on and it sets up, I'm going to put 5-minute epoxy over all of them to seal in the decal so it doesn't come off. It gives it kind of a look of a dial as well. So, okay. Oh, and by the way, I painted this in the sides of it, a gunmetal from Vallejo. Uh, they do ask for a gray, and it shows gray, but I like the gunmetal look better. I may go back and, and do some weathering on it, maybe add a little bit of gray to it. Um, I started to um, work on the sides as well. So I just drilled out a hole here, two holes up top, and I just have three thinner uh, fiber optic going into one shrink tube and it's and I'm going to use a cool white on it but I put some blue to me a clear blue and clear red to make those the different colors and I did that on both sides and I looked at a still the research I did after the fact and it looks like those are predominantly the colors on the sides um, the only other thing I might consider well, there's two things I might consider. Um, there are some yellow up on this part. I don't know how much more room I have to work with. That's going to be kind of tricky. So I don't know. I'll play with that and see if there's any room to do that. Just to add a little more color. And this little thing right here it's supposed to be a more pronounced control. I'm not sure what it is, but it's red and it glows. Let me go ahead and show you um, a still that I got from 
the TV show. All right, here's just a still on my television from the show, from him flying. Uh, this was from season three, an episode where he's flying with Grogu in the ship. So clearly these are blue. Then there's this thing here, which is red, which I'm gonna see if I can do something scratch build. It's really tiny. Um, the controls on the sides are a lot more pronounced than square, but I'm not gonna worry about that. But there's a lot more red over there. Over here, there's some red and blue. A little bit of yellow, but I'm just going to stick with the blue and red motif and um, and redo the lighting for that particular control. And the center one as well I'm going to do. All right, so I finished up the sides <clears throat> and the wiring. I'll kind of show you inside there. You can kind of see the decals in there. They're just basically some metallic looking and some, some black lines. You're really not gonna see much of those when you get the figure in there. They're really not gonna be that visible. Same with over at this side. You will see those black controls with the, um, the blue and the red fiber optics that I put in because they're going to be on the side above him. Um, and then of course you'll see the front controls. I did put a little yellow, one um, yellow fiber optic there. I put the decals on as you can see. Uh, they don't, the detail doesn't really show up. They're just very, very tiny, but it does give it a little bit of um, a busyness as though something is there. So it does, it does help. I think it helps a little bit to to sell the idea that they're displays. Um, and as I showed in the last stills, I also did some painting of the, the mechanics under there and drilled some holes and put some red wiring in there, some over here too, and over here. Uh, you're really not gonna see a lot of it. I am gonna do a little bit more weathering and I painted some of those hoses, some dark gray, uh, and I might do some more on the side as well, some painting. Because uh, it will show through the side, but not a not a massive amount on this part. And then some of these also show through. So, okay. But right now what I'm doing is I got all the wiring coming together. Uh, there's two different connectors that I need to solder together. My soldering iron heating up. So I'm going to solder these together and I'm going to put two of my thinner flexible wires on them. So I have one set of wires and they're going to go down through that hole right there. Come on through the bottom. So that way that'll be able to be wired into the, the kit with the rest of the lights. So, all right, let me get those wired together and then I'll connect them to a double A battery and show you what those controls are going to look like. All right, so here's the lights, just kind of the cockpit stuck up into the ship. It's not glued in permanently. You can see those displays there. You can see the um, the blue and the red lights on the left side and the, the decals. And then over on the right side the same way. All right, so nothing major. Obviously, they're not the main main view of the ship, but they're kind of cool. And then you can see that detail that I put in there. And again, you don't see much of that. You can see the wiring and you can see the other colors in there and that sort of thing. Over here will be the same way. You'll see a little bit of that through there. I'll do a little more painting on those parts there. Maybe on some of these too, so okay. All right, let me go ahead and put the, um, the Mando figure in here and the canopy on it and show you what that's going to look like. All 
All right, and here is Mando, just kind of sat in there, kind of give you a perspective. So you're going to be able to see those side lights there. The red one down there a little bit. The front ones, of course. Sorry for the reflection. And then over on the other side, you're going to see some red and some blue. So that yellow one that I put in there, for some reason it failed. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to go back in and try to do the wiring again. It's okay. For what you see in that cockpit, that's going to be enough to really give it some some realistic look to it. And of course the cockpit um, canopy, you can see that edge around it, that's gonna be painted metallic as well. So that's gonna put that in there. It's supposed to move along these tracks. I don't know if I'm gonna let it do that because I don't like how that's sitting up against that back. So I may have to just end up gluing it in place so it looks more more in place and not uh, having any gaps like that right there, as you can see. All right, but pretty cool. Primarily those displays are what you're gonna see and give you an idea that there's some lights in the cockpit. So, okay, very cool. All right, so I'm putting together the second engine and getting it glued onto the ship so I can start moving forward with doing some of the painting on the top of the ship before I put the interior in, the cockpit and the internal parts because they're wide open. I can't be painting that while those are exposed. So I'm not gonna go over all the details that I did in my initial video with the lighting. I just wanted to kind of give you a recap uh, for those who might wanna follow and do the same steps. You can use the same idea or some of the same ideas if you wanna use other types of lights like chip LEDs and that kind of thing. So we have the two halves of the engine. We have the interior engine parts, and we have the back cover that I modified to be clear. And then this is important. So this part being in the middle, you can certainly utilize the space inside of it to render wiring, no matter how you do it. So what I did was I totally cut out the flat part that was in the back of here. Uh, and then I went back in, it's kind of hard to see, but um, there were two major supports further up on the inside of this that I should have cut out initially, but I went and took a large drill with a large drill bit and stuck it down in there and, and hollowed that out. That way I have a wide open area. And then I, I used a, a Dremel to cut some holes through this in order to run my wiring through up to the front here. So, and then I have this one long blue filament, flexible filament, that I have soldered on a positive and negative wire to. Um, so you could certainly use in the front, since it doesn't have to glow the entire front part that I showed previously, you could put a couple of chip SMDs up here, maybe three or four, probably four, and then run the wires down through here, combine them together, coming out the back. So you could certainly do that. Um, for the back, I definitely want something that's more even lighting. That's why I like the filament. Just one filament, one light, and it does everything I need it to do. And then when this goes on to here, let me put that together and show you the other modifications. Right, so then on the back, initially I just put a couple of holes and I was going to wrap the filament around there come through one hole and back out the other but the problem is is getting all that wiring inside and through this and then coming out of the wing and and not running into a problem um, with the two halves together so i decided to just cut out a big chunk of the back because you're not going to see any of that um, and that way when these two parts are are separated I can run the wiring or the lighting through this, put this in, have everything in the bottom ready to go with the wiring. So the wiring can come through the one hole, wrap around this, go back through, and then I can put it together. Because the problem is you have this pin here, which the top wing of that's integral to the ship 
has to go down into that and give it support. So you cannot put the top on until you attach this onto the ship. And so it makes it more difficult. So it's certainly easier to have the lighting all done through this into this, ready to go with a little bit hanging out the back. So all I have to do is wrap that filament around this outer thing once it's together and run it back through. Well, it'll already be ran back through, but I'll just be able to tighten it around it because it is flexible and then glue it in place. So let me get that together. All right, so as you saw from the previous stills, I completed the engine lighting, the wiring of the flexible filament into the bottom part of the engine. So you can see at the top, it's wrapped around and it goes back into those two holes that I showed you, coming back out through the center. And then what I did was I, um, I soldered that onto some magnet wire which then you have to use magnet wire because this, this wing is so thin. Look how thin that is. But I channeled it and it's, it can, it can handle magnet wire, but that's about all that it's going to handle. It's not going to handle any other kind of a wire. Um, and then what I did was I soldered that onto some thicker wire on the inside to give it some more strength. And I have it taped in place right now. Um, but let me go ahead and show you what, um, how that is wired inside of there. All right, so uh, I just used some hot glue. It's kind of hard to see into there, but um, the magnet wire and all of the, and the other wires are just hot glued down inside of this section right here, because none of that's exposed. And then the magnet wire goes to a channel through the wing and it comes out on the inside. Show you that you can kind of see right there and also right there some magnet wire so you have to channel it out um, it pretty much works okay in the bottom wing uh, and what I did was I used some CA glue and some accelerant and I glued it into place so it was attached into the bottom of the wing so that all of that was ready to go and nice and solid and then all I had to do was glue this whole wing down underneath. And again, the engineering is fantastic. So there's, there's one of the edges. Here's the other edge. But they just look like normal panels. So you don't even really have to putty over those. And then, of course, the wing is nice and slim. So you don't see any of that. And it's on the bottom. So you're not even going to see any. The leading edge and the back edge are all one piece with the, the top of the kit. So you don't have to worry about doing any kind of paneling. And then when we're done, the um, the parts where it glues into the wing look like part of the paneling as well. So I can get that painted. And so what I'll do is once I get both of these engines on and attached, I'll, I'll mask them off and then paint the rest of the ship. And I'll paint the top first before I put the interior in or put the, uh, the bottom on. And I'll probably paint the bottom as well before I glue that into place. Um... Now, because I have to glue this onto the ship before I can put the top on, that's why I said I had to have this big opening in the back for the, the filament to come through. So it's, I don't have to worry about doing any more wiring once I glue this top on. So now that that's done, I can go ahead and put this in place. And then because this filament is flexible, I can stretch it over top of this rounded part and glue it in place with some five minute epoxy. And then uh, I'm ready to put the back cone part on this part here. And then it'll be some nice even lighting. And you can see there, you're not gonna see any of that in there, the hole in there or the other parts of the filament, because obviously you're only gonna see the edge around this when you put that back part with the spiky spine on it. And the same thing over here. Um, so the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do 
is get this top glued in place and then let that set up. And then all I'll have to do is get this positioned on then I can glue the back on. And then in the end, once it's all set up and everything, when I'm ready to, I can glue the, the front caps onto there as well. I don't have to do that right now. Or the back part with the, the spiky spines on it either. I'll do those at the end because they're, they're not going to affect any of the rest of the build. They're already painted. So that'll make it a lot easier. So, all right. Let me get this top put on here and this on. And then I'll show you the two engines lit up. All right. So I got the filament epoxied around there. Don't look pretty, but it doesn't have to be. As long as it stays in place and it glows, that's all I needed to do. Sorry, I wrapped it around a couple of times. All right, so I'm ready to go ahead and glue on the engine cap. It's like this one. So this will be glued in place. And um, and because I, I removed all that regular piece and the clear part, I had to snip off the ends, which had some keyed parts in there. Um, but it's okay. It matches up easily because you have these, these little notches at the top and you have the, um, the part itself has these. So these two notches line up with those notches on the top. So you can, you can put it in the right location. All I needed really were these two holes where the, I keep calling it a spiky or a spire, whatever these are called, where these two pins go into it and they're identical these are identical and these kit parts are identical they just fit on both sides um, so uh, let me get that glued on I just have the battery taped in here for now just so it's not in my way and then I'll go ahead and um, just stick these on the front I'm not going to glue either of these down but I'll stick them on just so I can show you how those are both look how those will both look with the lights on all right. So I have to be careful while I hold it because the um, these spires are not glued in place and they'll fall off. But uh, they're just sitting on by gravity. But you can see the nice blue glowing around them. Definitely see some more blue spilling through the engines, which is what I want to give it that idea that they're exposed. All right, let me try to show you the front without these falling off. Give you an idea of how that's going to look. You get a little bit of light spilling through the front. But again, I don't have the whole thing lit up and glowing. Sorry for the shakiness. I just wanted a little bit, which is how it looks in the show. All right, but looking really cool. So the engines are attached. They're wired in and lit up. Looking pretty sweet. All right, so now what I can do is go ahead and um, put these other parts aside, like I said, and start working on painting the top of this after I mask off the engines and have those ready to go. All right, looking pretty, pretty awesome.
All right, so beginning the painting on the top hall. And the first thing I did was I, um, and they're covered with tape now, but I painted the front little exposed sections uh, of the framework with a little bit of um, blue light gray, I believe, from uh, Vallejo. And, um, and then over these little engine part inserts and the open larger panels here, I painted with some Vallejo gun metal. And then I have those masked off now and also on the bottom because I want those to stay those colors. I also masked off this whole section, including this rounded part, because other than those gray panels at the front, this is all a more of a, uh, a shiny metallic. So I'm going to use alclad aluminum. Uh, it's like a newer part. Uh, let me show you a picture here real quick uh, from the show, showing an overhead shot. And then I'm going to show you a picture from the um, from the model kit of the of the Nabu N1 Starfighter to kind of show you what they were going for. All right, so you, as you can see from this nice overhead shot, the front section there is much shinier metallic than the part behind it, which is obviously the worn aluminum, which is reminiscent of the original Nabu fighter. As you can see, that whole front part was chrome silver, and the back was just yellow. So I think they were trying to go for that idea. Plus, in the show, that whole piece was missing, and they replaced it. All right, so what I'm going to do then is now that this is all taped off, I'm going to paint all of this aluminum. And I also attached on these two side wraparound pieces. Also very nicely engineered. You can't see the seam at all. It has a natural panel line. But that one line right there is actually a separation between that kit part, as you can see right there. Very nicely designed. Uh, but I put those on because obviously I have to get in that little tight spot there because I'm going to paint the bottom of the wing as well. The bottom wing, I'm just going to do aluminum. And on the inside of this extra part, I'm just going to do aluminum as well. So all of this is going to be aluminum. The whole bottom of the, the main hall is also going to be aluminum. And then I'm going to go back over it with the oily steel speckling to give it that, that worn uh, older look because the idea is in the show this whole part is here but all of this is missing and you can actually see the framework and the the um the beams underneath it it's all just missing big parts of the engines are missing obviously this thing was a wreck um and, and as as mando says it's a punk piece of junk <laughs> it's a pile of junk but um uh, but obviously they they clean up all of this this is even still like really faded and dirty yellow from the original Naboo fighter. So they they grind all that off, polish it off. That's why there's a few spots along here that have a little bit of yellow paint still because the idea is they, they didn't totally clean it off and there are a few little spots with some yellow. I will be doing that yellow over top of the aluminum, but this whole front section here, not including the engines, is gonna be an outclad aluminum. I'm not gonna use the chrome like I did on the front of the engine scoops because it's not quite that chrome shiny, but it's definitely newer and shinier than the rest of it. So I want to get that distinction between the really shiny metallic and the old worn out buffed metallic. So, okay. All right, so I painted all the parts I needed to with the Vallejo aluminum. I went back over it with some oily steel to give it that aged weathered look. And I'll show you the whole thing when I'm done. There's the panels that were gunmetal. They remain gunmetal. So what I did now was I, when I had originally masked off this front part from getting aluminum, I cut along this seam, so I kept this piece. So it would be the opposite. So now I'm gonna paint just this part. These are gonna stay gray. I'm going to put more masking over this and none of this gets any overspray. But I'm only painting the top and I'm painting this, um, the Alclad. So first of all, I'm going to go over it with the gloss black base. And then I'm going to use this aluminum. So it is going to be the shiny Alclad aluminum, but it's not going to be 
as shiny as the chrome, which I put on the front of the intake caps. All right. And so that once I do the black, I have to let that dry thoroughly. Then I'll go over it with the outclad aluminum. And then that'll finish the top of this ship. I'm also going to do the, um, the little carburetor part that goes here. That's going to be chrome because that's very shiny. So I'll do that black and I'll do that with the chrome as well because that'll go right on top of this. All right. All right. So I painted on the outclad. So here's the, um, here's the little carburetor. This came out nice and shiny and smooth. The hardest part about the outclads is that you have to have a smooth surface because you have to get the gloss black to be gloss and then it it looks really shiny when you put the metal on it like this. Um, now, I'm not that worried about this one because I didn't want it to be super shiny and glossy like this or like the front caps. So at first I was having some trouble getting the black to go on evenly. Uh, gloss is the hardest paint to paint on because you get a super shiny spot, it's getting a real shiny spot here and the rest of it was dull and you keep trying to go over it and it just doesn't come out right. So I ended up getting it semi-even but it was more of a satin coat versus a, a gloss coat which is fine. I didn't really want this to be this super shiny chrome uh, and then initially I went over it with some uh, I was looking at the aluminum, but it just, it wasn't really shining. It was too dark. So I initially went over it with some stainless steel outclad and it was too dark. I didn't much like it. So I went back over some more of it with the chrome, but I think it looks good. I think it turned out good. It's shiny. It's definitely a brighter silver and a shinier silver than what this aluminum is back here. And when you see the two together, they're going to be a contrast. All right. So let me go ahead and take off the tape and then I'll show you how that how that's turned out there. All right, and here's going to give you an idea. So I took the tape off so you can see in between those aluminum structures there and see some of the detail underneath. Uh, you can see the detail through this side and the cockpit, of course, that's going to be in there. Sorry. So there's going to be a lot of different metallics. That's what makes this, this ship, that's what's going to give it a unique look, is the different kinds of metallics. It's mostly just metals. Obviously, there's some gray there, which I'm going to dirty up a little bit. Um, but you can see the contrast between the shinier, newer metal and the older pitted aluminum. The newer parts that are going to look that way. The parts inside, which I'm also going to dirty up some more, and I'm also missing some inserts but it's definitely gonna come together and make it look like a, a nice random look to it. If this thing were all just one silver color, it would, would not look very good. It would look like a toy. So that's kind of the idea I was going with. And I'm really happy with how that's turned out. I like that. I like the metallic parts that are new and then the parts that are missing are showing other colors underneath. So, okay. All right, so that looks really good. Let me just show you underneath. So underneath, that's also the metal or the aluminum with the oily steel. I'm debating whether or not I want to take off the tape off of the engines yet. I think I can because I'm, I'm all done. The bottom I'm going to paint separately. Yeah, let me take that off and show you what that's going to look like then. All right, so looking really, really cool. I really like the different contrasts of the metallics. And when it's all together, I mean, obviously there's more I need to do. These aren't glued on all the way. I'm just holding the interior in. But you can see how the various metals play off of each other. So you have the glossy, the really shiny chrome on the front. The top piece, which is obviously a newer panel, which is shinier. The carburetor, which looks like it's a brand new piece they got. The darker interior that you're going to see through those openings. The engines, of course, which have their own various metallics going on and the dirty engine inside and that kind of thing. The scorched parts in the back. So very, very cool. I think that's going to go together very nicely. I like that overhead shot. It does 
look very much like the uh, the overhead shot from the from the show that I showed earlier. So really, really cool. All right. So for right now, that should be all the painting I need to do on the top. A little bit of touch up here and there, but nothing major. I need to start working on the bottom. Uh, the bottom is going to take a little more work because I have to get it ready for a brass tube for the wiring to go through to the base. So I need to start looking at what I'm going to do for the base and um, and how. I'm, see, that's falling off. <laughs> and how I'm gonna get that wired in um, before I start putting anything together. And I wanna paint the bottom of the hall as well before I glue it together. That way I can just touch up like the edges underneath. Cause again, with the engineering of this kit, there are no seams on the edges that I have to worry about. They're all underneath and they're all nicely hidden. So, okay. But looking really good. I'm not gonna light it up right now because I'll save that for the end when I get everything all together. Uh, I still have to do more on some of those interior panels as well that you can see. Obviously, the entire tail I have to work on. And uh, and then part of that has to be attached and glued into the top before I can do the bottom. A lot of a lot of things have to be done in a certain order for this to, um, to go together in the right way. But really happy with the progress. Really happy with how the top of the ship looks. I think that's going to be fantastic and give you a lot of character. And what would be otherwise just a, a metal ship so okay fantastic all right so that's going to wrap up this video uh and um definitely getting a lot completed on this ship uh next i will move on to working on the bottom of it to get that ready to go i'll have to start doing some some uh planning on the base because the bottom has to have a, a brass post where the wiring is going to go through and I'll have to get that planned out for the for the base underneath. Um, I'm probably just going to do something much smaller than the ship since it's 18 inches long but uh, but I'll definitely have something going down into the base uh, for the batteries underneath. Uh, I also have to uh, start working on the figures on the 3D printed Mando and Grogu that are going to go inside the ship as well. All right well thank you to all my new subscribers and stay tuned.